So a group of us were on vacation in the Bahamas and the topic of anal play came up and I casually mentioned, yeah, I've tried it before. If a guy's into it, I definitely will stimulate his pee spot. And the guy that I was hooking up with at the time wanted no part of it. He literally hopped out of the pool, soaking wet, grabbed his sneakers and he's like, I'm not gonna be seen with a girl who openly talks about stimulating guys in that way because I don't want people to think that I'm into it. And like literally seconds later, you hear his car tires like screeching out of our apartment complex and he never talked to me again. What's going on, everybody? Uh, listen, what you're about to watch right now is a little clip from Shan's podcast, Lovers and Friends. She's interviewing uh, Tahoe and Orlando from Hard and Soft. It's an incredible interview. You got to check out the full thing after this. I promise you, you're not going to regret it. All right. Now go listen to this. What would you think the average person would consider a freaky man? He does probably one or two things that the average person would do. If you put your toe in your mouth, then you're freaky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's about See, it. I would even push it. I think that they would consider something like he spits in my mouth or like I was about to say he fluids. chokes. Yeah, some kind of fluid mm -hmm. exchange. But I don't even think that they think of that because there is such a limitation on yeah. activities that yeah. a heterosexual mm -hmm. man can or a man of sex with women can do. And I think I think that's the communication aspect. Being able to be open, like how open is a heterosexual black man really going to be about his kinks, things that turn him? Because kinks for heterosexual black men normally are things that you're going to tuck away. Yeah. Because the community is going to shun you for that. You know what I'm saying? Men will shun you for it. Women will shun you, shun you for it. You know what I'm saying? Your family might shun you for it. So you're not going to say, hey, I like being tied up. Or, you know what I mean? I like somebody to punch me in my nuts. There's no, there's no space for that in our community. Um, but with us being able to communicate and talk, and I think obviously for her, the first thing was, do you like a finger in your butt? And I was like, I'm not against it. Like, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Show me what yeah, you mean. Can I like get an example? I'm for it, but. <laughs> Hey, it's you. I trust you. If that's what you want to do, you know, fuck it. Let's just have fun. Mm -hmm. And we had that type of fun. And then we started exploring more. And I hired two uh, dominatrices for her birthday. She didn't know. Um, she was just sitting up in the room. We were drinking and, and chiefing a little bit. And then I had one come in one door and another one come in another door with their whips. And I had to sit in the corner and watch. And it was an uh, interesting time because what all of a sudden. What a great birthday gift. All yeah. of a sudden. Jared, I'm, why have we never thought about that? <laughs> it's crazy that's a great birthday gift but then you realize in that that's when I realized that sex was so much more because they had her screaming and yelling and they don't have a dick they don't have that and this is my main go to is my <laughs> dick but they had her yes mistress yes mistress and they're doing all of these things and I'm, she, she was so wet and happy and exhausted when it was over I was like literally blown away by this experience, I think the anxiety probably just took me over. So they was like, come over here and let us suck your dick. My dick was like, no. <laughs> I was like, I can't. Help. No, no. <laughs> I don't want to. And um, <laughs> from there, we started going to sex parties or play parties and things of that nature. And um, even going to those, I was not as, as confident of a man that I normally am. I was not present at the first one or the second one, really. It wasn't until I really got comfortable with the space that I was kind of able to walk around dick out like I, I remember the first time we went she we was like oh you want to drink and i was like yeah i'm gonna go put my pants on she's like i got it and she walked across the room in her panties to the thing and i'm just like why is she so confident like why is she so comfortable here because i'm like no let me cover up and i realized i had work sex toys for women makes a woman freaky i mean for yeah. i think more of an evolved man because there's still a sector of the population who looks at it like if you use a sex toy that means that i'm not doing my job so it becomes like an ego challenge for them so mm -hmm. there are still a large percentage of women who are struggling to even say like i use a vibrator in my free time yeah. um, to bring that into the conversation but then on the flip side there is a sector who was like yeah if you're into bdsm if you bring in the benoit balls if you bring in the lubricant like if you bring in the bdsm like that's sexy and hot mm -hmm. yeah. but sex toys for women is progressive it's liberating for men, it means you're a loser. Mm. That, I think, is the stigma that a lot of people are fighting against. Women have become more the agency of their bodies. They have started doing mm -hmm. more and learning their bodies more and exploring more. And if we as men just stay in one space, they're catapulting past us, mm -hmm. like, on so many different levels. And it's like, yo, men need to realize that the power of sex is mental more than physical. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about... 
literally exploring every part of her being. So why wouldn't I want to incorporate that? Why wouldn't I want to meet her on that level? When my girl showed me her drawer full of dildos and vibrators and uh, wrist straps and all types of stuff, I was faced with a, a fork in the road. Yeah. Either I stay over here because she's going to use these. This is not, this is not, I'm not replacing these. <laughs> so either incorporate them or get lost. And that's kind of what got me into being a little bit more explorative. I don't, I don't think it's necessarily like a, a pulling or a holding back. I think it's just a fear of being left behind, really, for men. I think um, it's very apparent that they see uh, the direction of how like sexual liberation is going. And um, it, it, it is it's scary uh, to feel left behind. So I think it's more of like a desperation reach than like, I want you to be pulled back. But don't you think, pardon me, mm -hmm. if, I think they're scared of what women are going to think. Yeah. Because, like I said earlier, it's not just the other guys that you're scared of ridiculing you, you're scared of the other women. There's an, an old thing where uh, the guy says, don't tell the group chat that you used to finger pop me, that you used to put your finger in my mm -hmm. butt. Now I'm showing up to the dinner table and all your girls is looking at me laughing and yeah. you don't wanna be the guy that's outed from the cool table mm -hmm. by the ladies. We do most of our things that men do is for the ladies. So, but you have a lot of women that are holding on to archaic views of sex as well. And not saying that it's y'all fault, right? I'm not saying that it's women's fault, but men are scared of that judgment. Women, mm -hmm. Men, we do everything from wearing Jordans to chains to our waves. Everything is yeah. to attract women. So if that one thing comes out, that I like to do this, and now I'm ostracized from that community, and I'm, I'm, I'm ridiculed by ladies all over, where do I go from here? I mean, I agree with you, partially. Okay, popping in one more time. Uh, now what you're about to listen to is uh, me and a couple of my friends sitting down, having a good time, talking. It's me, Chris, Cray, and Los. And we're going to be talking about everything you just heard from Orlando and Tahoe and our experiences. So this is just a clip as well. You got to listen to the full thing as well. So after you're done watching this, go to the bio, click that link, go check it out. It's a very interesting, interesting podcast. I almost forgot the word podcast for a second. But you know what I'm saying. What are your first thoughts when you think my, about that interview? My first thought was all these years when I was younger, I thought I was a freak. I was not a freak. I was a slut. <laughs> That's all I was. I was not a freak, man. That that Orlando, you a freak. Me, yes. I was just promiscuous as hell. That's all. Yes. Yeah. What, what, what nah, about you guys? Once I heard that, I was like, yeah, I was like, I don't, I don't really, I don't think I'd be classified as a freak, to be yeah. honest, no more. <laughs> Not a freaky dude, apparently. <laughs> you know what? I don't wear dildos and on my okay. face. And that's okay. And that's okay. It's another level. It's a different level. What yeah. is, what is considered a freaky guy? Exactly what they were saying at first, like, mm -hmm. Put a toe in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Spit in your yeah. mouth. You mess like with that. a. You feel me? You eat some ass. Yeah, that's or, like the level. You're like, oh, you spit in her mouth. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> well, and then you know you hear his stories and you're like, oh, I'm not a freak. Maybe. Well, do you think that's because of socialization, or do you think that's just your actual desire? The things that we think are freaky are maybe not as freaky as we think they are. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. the things that guys are like, oh, I ate ass before, like. Okay, like that's yeah. that's pretty normal actually. Mm -hmm. They're not really pushing the envelope by I doing mean, that. It's not that. Yeah. Well, I know. I was gonna Wait, know. So, so I, 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 that's I, I, off I, the yeah, table. Y'all you know. ain't eating butter. <laughs> what? I mean, that's it's not that normal. No booty. It's just a little. Bro, you don't gotta eat it seasoned. You that is it for. <laughs> like I'm I mean, not just eat, gonna eat her you, ass. You eat pussy, right? Yes, that's I mean, you not already ass. There. So. Just, you know, just walk to the backyard, bro. You already at the front door. Wow. Well, you're seeing the levels here, right? I think yeah. that's the point. Maybe so, yeah. Yeah. But look, it's just different. Like, yeah. yeah. I will say there was something that I didn't know that I liked that I found out that I liked that I asked for mm. pretty often now. Um, I didn't know I liked nip my nipples played with. Mm. I thought that was like, it was like fruity when I was younger. Mm. And then like Shan mm. did it. And I was like, wow. Well, everybody's trying to hold back the jiggles right <laughs> now. No. I'll let him out first. You see, you see, you see, you see, you see them. Oh, no. the camera I'm looking over Cray is trying to hold Cray is like sitting here about to die I have never seen you Cray. Hold it like Nipples got like Cray weak <laughs> Look at Cray's face right now Jesus Those who are too afraid to venture outside the box at all 
often suffer from side effects of sexual repression, which include strict adherence to traditional gender roles, confusion or disgust towards your own sexual preferences, misinformation about sex, an aversion to learning about sex and fear that new information could highlight your insecurities.